Hello again, it's Mr. Pete sitting next to my 10 inch South Bend Heavy and I'm planning on selling this. Matter of fact, by the time you watch this video, it'll be long gone, but I wanted to make several videos before I did sell it and the most recent video, number 700, I showed you how to turn a taper on the lathe using the taper attachment method. So in this video, I think I'll show you it even a simpler way by the compound rest method, both internally and externally. So let's get started. In review, there are three methods of turning a taper on any lathe. Number one, the compound rest method, and that's what we will cover today. Number two, the offset tailstock method. And number three, the taper attachment method covered in video tips number 700. Each of these methods has pros and cons, and here they are for the compound rest method. The pros are it's a very fast, easy setup. Number two, it allows very steep tapers, and three, it allows you to bore a tapered hole. The cons are you can only cut short tapers. The workpiece must be held in the chuck because the tailstock in most cases would interfere and the power feed cannot be used unless you're on one of the big machines that has a power feed on the compound and I'm not sure what machines those are but certainly not the South Bend lathe. Similar to the last video, I'm not actually making a project, it's just an exercise and this is three-quarter inch aluminum and that's uh, well I forgot what the taper was on the other one but this will be a 10 degree taper included angle so I will set the compound for half of that which is five degrees so let's take a look at how to do that but you probably know already this of course is the compound rest and right now it's at zero degrees. I have the two screws loosened right now to show you how this swings, but it can swing uh, at any degree to the left. Now that's zero. That's 90 in that direction. That's 90 in uh, this direction. And of course it can go all the way around if you would ever have a need for that. I never have. But coming back to zero now, I want to set it for 5 degrees, so I think I'll come over here to 90 and back off and there is a zero witness mark down here where my finger is. Some machines have them in different places or have more than one of them, so I will set it a little bit past if I want the small end of the taper to be toward the tailstock, otherwise it would be on this side of the 90. Now I take it back, I will not be able to use the zero on this side, I will have to do it right here where there is also a witness mark. Zooming in just a little bit you might be able to see that, and of course I got to get in there with a magnifier and even another flashlight and <laughs> set it at five degrees and then lock both of the screws. A big problem with these smaller lathes is that, there's, is that there is not very much length of travel on the compound, only about two inches on the south bend. So at this time we can only make a taper up to two inches long. Now there's an alternate way of doing that by moving the carriage. Maybe I'll touch on that, maybe I won't. So you can get a little bit longer taper but you have to finagle. As I told you in the last video it's very essential when you're turning tapers that the cutting tool be exactly on center so I have moved the tailstock center up as close as I can and this is still centered on height uh, from the last video so I don't have to change anything but sometimes you're going to have interference right here and that is why I have said to you recently or in the last video that generally the tailstock cannot be used to support the work by using this method but there may be some times when, when it can but right in here you're going to have a problem and you can see that I can't really get my hand in there I'm stuck already 
to, to rotate this crank. So back the tailstock out of your way and then an adjustment can be made here on your tool and the reason I'm using the old lantern tool post here is it's, it doesn't get in the way so much when I'm videotaping otherwise I probably wouldn't use it also turn off your your lead screw right here with the feed reverse lever because you don't need that extra noise or extra wear because this is strictly hand feeding isn't it okay back your compound as far as it'll go to the right. Now according to Newton's third law when you start cutting it may push the entire carriage back so always use your carriage lock when you're using this method and don't forget to release that when you're done so you don't cause wear or any problems with the machine. Lubricate your machine before each use. Wear safety glasses when you're working on a lathe or any other place in your shop for that matter and be careful. I'm at 1400 RPM that's a round nose tool and this whole setup could have been done in uh, two minutes or less if you didn't have to change chucks or anything like that so it's a real quick setup. Now I'm going to come in so I think I'll turn the machine on and then come in until I touch off and now I'm ready to cut. Got just a little bit of chatter so I may change the speed. I am arbitrarily going to make this taper about two inches long. That's up to the blue line there, so I'm going to move the work in a little bit to help remove some of that chatter. Remember, we can't support it with a center, unfortunately, so I'll try to choke it up as close as I can, like right there. When you turn your crank, try to do it in a constant steady rate rather than stopping and dwelling like that because you might get just a little mark or groove if you stop. So I like to do it continuously like this, sometimes even switching hands. And that will be out of the video range most of the time. I'm going to run through the full length of the taper here without the machine running just to show you how really short the amount of travel is on this compound. There it is. I couldn't even come up to the blue line if I wanted to. Now this is another piece of material. It's not what I just used a few minutes ago. And I wanted to show you what you can do in order to produce a taper that's slightly longer than two inches or longer I should say than the travel of the compound. Now note now that I've already gone about as far as I can go. <laughs> go. That's a song, Broadway song. I've gone about as far as I can go. See, that's the end of the travel. I had to move the work just a little bit out of the chuck, but what I'll do now is back the compound all the way, or it doesn't have to be all the way, that's good enough right there, and then I've got to move the carriage up and then relock it. Doesn't matter exactly where. Put a little nick on it there. And then I will relock it 
And then I'm going to come in and try to blend it in the best I can by bagasse and bagasse and by eye. And if necessary, file it smooth to blend it. Well, I only want to b went about a, another quarter inch or something, but that you get the point here of how to blend it in. You can see that there is a little line there. Generally, there's going to be. I'm not going to take the time to make that any better, but of course, you can smooth it with a file, which is not always satisfactory. I'm just telling you. You can cut a very steep taper. This is 45 degrees. In fact, we might just call it a chamfer. And that same 45 degree can be cut with a compound swung over as you see it now. The belt is uh, squeaking, isn't it? And that might be handy if you needed to use the center, if you had a center hole. There probably would be clearance for all of this. So you can try different setups that's almost infinitely variable depending on your creativity. This is my tailstock center and it is a hardened center. But years ago quite often the headstock center would be a soft steel center and it could be turned or trued with each setup. Of course you wouldn't hold this in the chuck you would hold it directly in the taper and set this for 30 degrees which of course is half of the 60 and you would true up the center because often when you take headstock centers in and out repeatedly they're not running all that true anymore so that was commonly done. Now I'm going to make an internal taper that is I'm going to bore a taper so I've already switched tool holders and I've got a boring bar in here small enough to go in this 9 16 hole and actually I want to bore a hole that will accommodate this taper that I made a few minutes ago which is 5 degrees or I should say 10 degree included angle and I was originally going to tell you that do not change the setup because then the tapers will match exactly but in fact you have to be on the other side of zero so I did have to change it that may not mean anything to you what I just told you until you actually <laughs> do this but of course the compound can, sw can, uh, can turn on either side of zero now we're on the other side five degrees on the other side now hopefully you can see the setup There are not a lot of good measure instruments for tapers. <clears throat> and I showed you this in the last video, just using your common protractor like this off of the perpendicular end. And it's questionable how accurate that is. But there isn't any good instrument to just measure like this other than using gauges. So in industry they have gauges for all of that, uh, internal and external tapers. Or it would go to the uh, la you know, inspection lab or something like that where they can do it on a surface plate or with sign bars and all such uh, instruments like that, measuring instruments. This is kind of a tough one also to measure. 
But this one with a narrow blade works a little better than that blade, which will not even go in to the internal taper. But yet you can't really see what you're doing on the inside. But I can see it fairly well there and fairly well on the other end that I am at 5 degree taper. Now another way that they suggest, I don't know how good it is, is to put chalk or layout dye or something on the Prussian blue and then put them together and turn them and you will see the high spot or where it's actually touching on both the uh, external and the internal taper. So that's how you cut a taper internal and external by the compound rest method. I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you next time. Be sure and read this book. But actually there's not a whole lot in this book about turning tapers with the compound rest method. This is most of it right here. I talked about truing up a soft headstock center but in another video of mine, buried in the archives, I do grind a 60 degree center on one of my lathes. I don't think it's the South Bend, but this is a tool post grinder here. And there is the center. You can perhaps read that text right now. Pause your video.